Hi, everybody. Hi there. <laughs> Here we are again. It's, it's another one of these. David Gans. And it's not a bad weather day. That's what they tell us. The weather is supposed to be cooperative for the first time in a while. Up in Bethel, New York, the site of uh, this other musical shindig, which uh, took place uh, a bunch of decades ago. You may have heard about it. Uh, there is now uh, this actual beautiful venue there, uh, an amphitheater in place of a big pool of mud. And uh, it's really a nice one. I've been there a couple of times and various Grateful Dead alumni bands have played there. And it's a really nice atmosphere uh, without the New York Thruway having to be closed. So we're really looking forward to this. And this band has been on such a roll. Every show has been a gem. The show in Philly the other night was pretty amazing because they pulled off a show that was under duress because of what, possible weather conditions delaying or shutting down the show. So they played their entire show without a set break, modified the set list enough to squeeze in plenty of music, plenty of jamming, and uh, it just all came off brilliantly. So we're looking forward to more of the same tonight under better weather conditions. Oh, yes, indeed. I have been, uh, you know, I, I produce a syndicated national radio show called The Grateful Dead Hour, and I listen to these shows and pull favorite bits to uh, play on the radio. And I have an embarrassment of riches, man. Every show has had like really, really amazing moments of uh, sequences of songs and just individual performances and stuff. And everybody, it seems like the band just really, really been knocking it out of the park every time before we go much further i should tell you that we're uh talking to you now as the part of the free preview of the nugs.net feed if you're looking at this on youtube and part of our mission here is to persuade you to convert yourself into a paying customer and buy the feed that's coming on tonight you get the first song for free uh, but then you got to sign up for the rest of it. We'll be back between sets and, uh, to talk some more. And we've got a special couple of special guests for you today. And then you'll get the first song of the second set for free as well. Uh, whenever you come on board to buy one of these shows, you have 48 hours of access to it. Information about all this stuff, you can buy the show at nugs.net or you can go to livedead.co for lots more information about what nugs.net has to offer including the complete library of Dead & Company performances going back to 2016. Amazing. And also tons of music by other people. If you are a subscriber to Nugs.net's streaming service, you can get music by Fish, by Bruce Springsteen, by Wilco, by tons of other people. Uh, it's a really great resource for the music freak and aren't we all so go ahead and check that out i really recommend it i've been a subscriber for quite some time and i've just gotten so much great music out of it indeed it's one of those amazing resources and this whole thing came up out of the jam band scene man brad brad serling who started this whole thing off was uh, began looking for a place to trade his uh co concert recordings digitally and wound up becoming the guy that brings us all of this amazing music live and in the archive. Uh, it's been a, a terrific achievement. It's been fun to watch him do it over the last 20 plus years. And now it's great for us to be part of it. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, it just, it kind of broadens our community in a way. It, it lets us reach out to people who can't be at the shows. Um, it's a fantastic experience for me because, you know, my ability to go to the shows is limited. A lot of people's ability to go to the shows is limited by COVID and all these other things. And it's really great to bring this music into your living room. You want to be at the shows. You want to have that communion with people. But as next best things go, this is pretty amazing to see it in HD or 4K. It's also available in 4K if you've taken that technological leap forward. Uh, and it's fantastic. It's just the camera work is always stellar. You know, you see the happy people in the audience. I've seen dozens of friends of mine already since they've been yeah, playing New York too. area shows, you know, and uh, yeah. I feel like I feel like they're they are there on the rail representing for me, you know. <laughs> 
it is it's it's great you know and we're of course gary and i are older and so we're you know less likely to be out all night stomping and, and uh partying anyway but uh even if you are young and vigorous it's a little scary to go outside at times these days so being able to watch an entire tour from home is pretty damn cool i have to say we are now hey, waiting for the okay. band to uh, take the stage, uh, and we're we're going to get a cue out of the corner of our eye at some point. So basically, what Gary and I are doing right now is just vamping, trying to uh, get you as excited as we are about what's coming off the stage with Dead and Company these days, and uh, uh, perhaps interest you in uh, checking out the uh, Nugs.net feed of tonight's show, and also you can subscribe to the entire tour. And there's also just if you're just if you don't want the video, you can just get audio downloads of all these shows also after the fact at uh, LiveDead.co. And David, if I may interject uh, in reply to that thing you said about uh, at our age, less likely to be out stomping uh, all night. Speak for yourself, Pops. I will happily. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a. I'm a I'm a working musician. I've stayed out till 4 a.m. any number of times in my life, but it's okay to, you know, it's nice to be able to just watch it in your living room with a cat snuggling in your lap, you know? True, true enough. Uh, you know, and I am still a live music freak, and of course I live in one of the live music epicenters of the world in New York, so I still get out a satisfactory amount to hear live music. In smaller settings, mostly these days, because big crowds are still a bit problematic, but... Uh, I feel very blessed to have live music in my life, and I feel very blessed to have this way of getting live music delivered to my living room. Well, if my half-thoughtless remark inspired you to make such an impassioned case for live music, I'm glad I, I set you up perfectly there, my friend. And it's not as though I'm, I'm not a big fan of going out and seeing it live. I'm just a fan of getting a good night's sleep as well at my age, so here I am. <laughs> Anyway, we're, again, you can tell that we're just vamping and waiting for the signal because our the quality of our discourse is degrading rapidly. But that's what they hired us to do. So here we are, degrading rapidly. That's right. And we are told that we are told that some band members are on stage. There are always stragglers. Having worked in the live music business for years, I am very familiar with this phenomenon. You know, where is that one? Where is that guy? What's he? Oh, he made a bathroom run. Okay, that's cool. Uh, there's always a bit of suspense. Uh, the cue we usually get that we can trust is when the house lights go down, which is such a great moment because the crowd just surges and, and yells and screams with joy. So uh, we will get that signal and then we will deliver the news to you and then we'll go away and Dead and & Company will take the stage. Yes. And then after the first set, we'll be back and we have a couple of guests lined up for today. They asked us to put together a, a chat show for that dead space in between the sets where they used to just put up a card saying, stay tuned. Now there you have us instead. And we've just been talking to all these great musicians and cultural figures and stuff, lining people up to talk with you. Our first one was with Don Was, and that was really spectacular. Uh, and uh, we've got some lovely people uh, lined up for you tonight as well and more in the weeks to come. So if you uh, are going to watch this uh, come back, if, you, if you're just watching the free preview, come back in an hour and a half or so and watch the free preview of the second set during which we will provide, be providing some content that might actually be of interest. Yeah, we uh, are very happy that we're getting to do this. It has been so much fun so far. Uh, we're really happy with the guests we've been able to get. We've got some more lined up uh, in the coming weeks, and we're talking to other people, figuring out the right dates that they can find holes in their schedules. And we're going for, you know, people who are musically knowledgeable, who are passionate deadheads, who have good causes to talk about. In other words, all the stuff that this community is so deeply invested in. And uh, it's been a great experience. The response from the audience has been fantastic. The response from the people we've gotten to talk to has been great. They have loved doing it. So we're in for the run of the tour. We're really looking forward to this. We hope to bring you a lot more great people as this goes on. And uh, stay tuned. It's going to be great. It is. Now, I hope they're getting ready to start playing. Because I've run I out hope of things so. to say. We should We'll go back to uh, mentioning again that LiveDead.co is the place to go to find out all about the online uh, availability of live concerts and archived concerts and the streaming service that Nugs.net offers. 
You can subscribe now to Nugs and get access to this immense library, as Gary mentioned earlier, the Rolling Stones, Bruce Springsteen, uh, the, the uh, Jerry Garcia band stuff is on up there as well. So there's huge amounts of music available as a streaming service that's over here in the uh, hippie jam and kind of corner of things and lots of other great stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really great. And there is something else we can tell you about. Uh, we always encourage people to support the good causes that the band supports, uh, including the Rex Foundation and Headcount primarily among them. But then Rex and Headcount both support many, many, many fine groups, nonprofits. And uh, if you are at the concerts, there's a section called Participation Row where you can go and find out about the good works of these organizations. And uh, the Rex Foundation, of course, has been working with the Grateful Dead mm -hmm. for nearly four decades, doing all kinds of incredible works. And at the bottom of your screen there, you can see URLs that you can hit on your computer mm -hmm. and go find out more about the works of those organizations. Yeah, and the Rex Foundation offers opportunities for you to uh, give your time and energy as well as money or instead of money. If, if money is hard to come by, but you have some time, you can participate in various uh, events and uh, um, uh, operations by these beneficiaries. If you go to rexfoundation.org, you will see links to all of the beneficiaries and lots and lots of stuff about the organizations that they have supported in the last 40 years. Uh, and maybe you can get inspired to find places that are near you where you can lend a hand. And they did this uh, long uh, thing during the days between a huge like nine day fundraiser. And that included the opportunity to uh, uh, participate. And what was the name of that? The community. Uh, give, uh, I've lost that phrase. It was a uh, uh, days of service or something like that. Days of service. Days of service. That's right. You got it. It's the A-Z-E of service. Yes. <laughs> Right. Um, so if you're just tuning in, um, or actually you may be seeing this minutes after we say it because there's always a time lag, uh, we are just going to tell you that once again, I'm Gary Lambert and he's David Gans, and we are waiting for Dead & Company to take the stage. Some of them have taken the stage, the others uh, are said to be approaching the stage at their own leisurely pace, and we're waiting for the band to start playing, uh, what is this, the fifth show of uh, the tour, I think it is. Um, th right. They've got... Yeah, they've got four in the bag and everyone has been a gem. Uh, they are at the historic Bethel Woods site, site of the Woodstock Festival. Uh, you've probably heard all those stories or you've seen the movie, but uh, the uh, it's, it's, oh, the band is all on stage, we're told. Now we're just waiting for the magic house lights uh, cue. But anyway, yeah, th this, is a, this is a more pleasant and uh, easily accommodating place to see a show than Woodstock was. Uh, you don't get three days of... Uh, peace, love, and music in one shot, but you can get one very memorable show per evening, uh, and they've got a lot of great music lined up there. It's, it's a state-of-the-art amphitheater. Uh, so the sound and lights and everything are better than they were at Woodstock. Uh, the ambience is considerably different. Uh, unfortunately, the hog farm isn't there to, uh, to talk you down, but uh, I'm sure they have competent professionals to do that as well. And I, I'm guessing that the uh, the food at the concession stands is going to be a little more consistent and uh, well, palatable yeah, the, than some of them at Woodstock. Right. Well, the concession stands at Woodstock uh, um, ran out of food uh, very early, uh, and I think one of them burned down. So I, I think people trying to get something to eat are going to be a little, a little luckier at this one. <laughs> Another thing I can mention while we've got a little time to kill is that Gary and I are the co-hosts of a show on Sirius XM's Grateful Dead channel called Tales from the Golden Road. It happens on Sunday afternoons from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we talk to you. We open the phones and talk to you. We listen to stories. We answer questions. We uh, quash rumors. Sometimes we spread rumors. Uh, we sometimes are able to amplify jokes and other things. And uh, so if you're not a subscriber to Sirius XM, uh, you, I might not be able to hear this. But if you are, check out Channel 23, the Grateful Dead channel. And our show is on Sunday afternoons from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, which is the same as 1 to 3 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. We've been doing it for 13 years and counting now. And it's one of the reasons why they brought us together to do this. 
because they figured after all that time, we figured out how to keep from fucking over each other for the most part. <laughs> and for the most part. And, and by the way, some synergy there. Um, Sirius XM now has what they call a platinum uh, subscription, which gets you everything that's on Sirius XM plus access to uh, a bunch of Nugs.net material. There's been a little uh, convergence of Nugs and Sirius, so uh, that brings uh, our two great civilizations together in harmony. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, well, we're expecting the lights to go down all any second now. So uh, we're just basically filling little bits of time here until we get that last cue. It's <laughs> expecting uh, or uh, praying. I, I'm so looking forward to tonight. I don't know if anything special is planned for the site of Woodstock, but I know that there are many songs in the band's repertoire that were played by the Grateful Dead on that night. So the opportunities for historical resonances are certainly many, but it remains to be seen uh, how exactly they're going to do it. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing it because, as we've noted, the first four shows of this tour have just been universally spectacular and i just i'm so thrilled with what everybody's doing together and can't wait to hear what it's going to be like tonight yeah i think uh, the odds are that the uh, band is going to at least have things go more smoothly than they did at woodstock for them anyway the grateful dead have often numbered woodstock among their most catastrophic career moments uh, it wasn't as bad as they thought it was but it was it was burdensome <laughs> I wonder if some rando is going to climb up on stage and start talking on a mic in the middle of a song as happened at the original Woodstock. Nobody has ever figured out who that person was. And the question has been asked a zillion times. But somebody got up in Mysterious. the middle of the dead set and just started raving on the microphone. And it wasn't any of their entourage. It wasn't Ken Babs, as has been speculated. So nobody knows. It. If it was you, would you please fess up? We'd love to talk to you. Yes, Ken Babs was there though, and he enticed the guy off the yeah. microphone with a joint. So, <laughs> all right, house lights down. down. Let's get to work here. Enjoy, everybody. Hey, what a fine well, set. Well, yeah. I'll say. Let me quickly run down the set list. Hell in a Bucket, Easy Win, Loser, Brown Eyed Women, Throwing Stones, Road Jimmy, Lost Sailor, and Saint of Circumstance. And let me say how thrilled I am that Lost Sailor has returned to the songbook in the last couple of years. Such a great, great song, and I've missed it. it. It fell out of the Dead's repertoire for, you know, 10, 15 years there. It was great to have it back. And Gary... What is it with what is John Mayer doing with this guitar? It's got a whammy bar and he's getting a lot of use out of that thing. Yeah, but hey, listen, let's let's save that to talk to our uh, our wonderful musical uh, musically astute guests about that a little bit um, because I'm sure they'll have some comments on the set as well. Um, but before we do that, let's set the scene. This is a little halftime show that we've had devised uh, and for which we've been invited to host to our immense gratitude uh it's called dead air with lambert and gans uh i'm lambert so by process of elimination the other guy is gans and we're going to be doing this for every show of the tour hosting for nugs.net uh and of course all of these shows are available to stream you can find out how to do that at nugs.net or livedead.co and we are going to have guests on every set break from various realms of the general Grateful Dead universe and its suburbs. And we are really looking forward to this. We're really looking to forward to tonight's guest. David, shall we bring them on? Well, let's just go ahead and do that then. We have my friends, neighbors, and longtime colleagues and collaborators, Blair Jackson and Regan McMahon from live from Oakland, California, not far from where I am. Hi, you guys. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Very you good. look lovely. I haven't seen you. But Blair, Blair and Regan were the publishers and editors of The Golden Road, a fabulous fanzine in the early uh, 80s and early 90s. And uh, really, really wonderful uh, commentators on all that stuff. Blair, of course, has written several books about the Grateful Dead, including The Grateful Dead Gear and uh, Garcia and American Life, and he's my collaborator on um, the, This Is All a Dream We Dream and an Oral History of the Grateful Dead. 
And uh, what else is going on with you two guys? Uh, they're also big fans of this band, and we were dancing together to it just a couple of nights ago. It's true. It's true. Yeah, that was a great show. They've all been good shows. Yeah. So it's it's been it's been really exciting. You know, uh, a weird thing happened. Uh, somebody came to our door during the beginning of the first set and was offering some brown acid. And since there wasn't, was since there was nothing nothing mentioned from the stage, we we did it. So I don't know. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. Well, we we can reassure you, it's not poison. It's just not specifically too good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so Blair, uh, I want I want to get into. This. We'll, we'll talk about the set. We'll talk about lots of stuff. Um, you know, we are both old East Coast homeboys, deadheads. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in fact wearing a T-shirt that commemorates uh, all the shows the Grateful Dead played at the Capitol Theater in Porchester, New York, mm -hmm. and I believe. Mm -hmm. Porchester is where the figurative bus came by for you, where you saw your first show. Is that correct? Yes, uh, March 20th, 1970, late show. It was my, my first set, uh, my first show, and I, my mind was blown, and uh, I kept going back and kept going back. I loved the Capitol. The Capitol was great. That first night, it was only about half full, probably, which I think is the only time I ever saw a crowd that small for the Grateful Dead. The word got around about the Capitol pretty quick after that. So uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It had Still just opened, East. I think, yeah, it had just opened yes. weeks before that, to the Capitol, and many New Yorkers didn't know where Porchester exactly was. I missed the first <laughs> night at the Capitol. I missed March 20th and was there every night the Grateful Dead played there thereafter. So I have that one blot on my attendance record, but I'm glad you were there to represent anyway. <laughs> Well, I, I was only there for that, and uh, I, I, in the, in those days, I didn't know you had to go to every show in the run, so I would usually go to one, <laughs> however many there were. And I, I think, uh, yeah, February '71 was the first time I went to two two shows in a run, and that that was exciting. So, I, I don't I think I ever heard that you had to go to every show. I just sort of opted to go to as many shows as I could. <laughs> Regan, when was your first show? Uh, the 1980, the Warfield shows when they did the 15 nights and then they went to New York, you know, that whole series. So I was a little late to the game. Never too late. What did you think? <laughs> I, I really liked it. I thought it was great. And uh, then one of the, you know, one of the, I guess it was the last show in the run. We were there where, where Bill Graham passed out champagne to everyone. And that was like a really magical moment. There's some great photos of that. And uh, I thought, yeah, this is pretty special. <laughs> Did you like the music too? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I had indoctrinated her already, so yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. sort of came with now, the both of you, Yeah, bo both of you, uh, I, guess, I guess you met through music journalism. Both of you have a background in journalism um, and uh, you became fellow deadheads and husband and wife and all that. It must be nice to have uh, such a uh, one-stop passion as the Grateful Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we all worked together um, at AM Magazine, and we all got to watch the romance between Blair and Regan uh, blossom there in, in the editorial department. It was great fun. <laughs> yeah. They were charming. Start. Yeah. <laughs> and now, since the pandemic and everybody's working at home, we're back to the way we were at BAM, just both in a, in a bedroom, in a building, <laughs> and that's where we were. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that first set a little bit. I, you know, once again, uh, so there have been, this is the ninth set of the tour, four shows under their belt and now uh, four and a half. Uh, and they've just come out blazing at each one. And, you know, even some of the most commonplace songs like Hell in the Bucket just are, you know, they don't seem commonplace in the hands of this band. Bobby's high notes on Hell of the Bucket were so on point tonight. I mean, he was hitting them like 1972 vintage Bobby, I thought. Yeah, I, I really like the way uh, this band does Hell in a Bucket for it more often than not, which is kind of the way Rap was doing it there towards. I, it's really nice to kind of ease into it and then to kind of slam into it uh, uh, once you get there. So it's 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 a nice build up for, for it. Yeah. Yeah. My, I thought that was, my, my thought the, was uh, when, when the set started, <laughs> my wife was listening to that and go, I don't know what this is, but it sure is sweet. And yeah, uh, yeah. it became hell in a bucket. So yeah, they right. kind of gently eased up into that thing instead of, as you say, slamming into it as like they used yeah. to. 
I, I guess you and, guys have not really discussed, discussed the first set at all, but uh, would like to hear your thoughts on the aborted Easy Wind. I wouldn't call it aborted. I would I would say uh, they they didn't end it with a big flourish. They kind of like let it trickle into into uh, whatever was next uh, into loser. It was uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know that's the thing. It. Like it, yeah, they never quite finished it. Uh, well, they 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 didn't do the three four section uh, at you know that that the pig pen version had. But uh, it's kind of refreshing that just about everything this band does is kind of non-standard, you know, in terms of the way the Grateful Dead did it. Throwing stones in the middle of a first set was a very yeah. uncharacteristic call, you know, um, and there was so much set left after that. So throwing stones very often will end a set or, you know, be the yeah. penultimate tune of a set. And, and they had some surprises up their sleeve, as I expect they will in the second set. Yeah, they, they, they always, they always manage to surprise yeah. What? Yeah. I, 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 now let's talk about John's guitar and that whammy bar because you can, you guys can add yeah. some commentary on that as well. It's is that a new thing this tour, Gary? Um, I know John has he he's got like a new custom model of his John Mayer signature model guitar um, from uh, PRS, uh, his standard for for many years. Um, I don't know much about it, but he, he's been using the whammy bar for to great effect. Uh, for these first several shows, uh, you know, and it, it's yeah. not something I've seen him do a lot of. And and then Bobby well, had that interesting that that, yeah, Bobby had that hollow body Gibson out for the last uh, for for Sailor and Saint, and uh, that was, I don't know if I've seen that one before. Or, or he, I think he's, he's used he's used it sparingly. He's used it with Wolf Bros, but uh, I can't recall if I've seen it on stage with uh, Deadco before, and it, it it worked just fine. I thought. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been kind of refreshing to see John play the same guitar night after night because it sounds really really good, and I think it meshes really weir really well with Weir's guitar. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's I th I think the whammy bar is I don't know if it's new, but it's definitely he's definitely using it more than he has in the past. It was it was so, it was so great on Road Jimmy, you know, where Garcia used to sort of play a slide solo pretty often in the early '70s on that, uh, so it had mm -hmm. a little bit of that vibe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying. I, let me interrupt quickly to remind people that were that are watching this as a free preview on YouTube that uh, one the reason they're giving you this free preview is to induce you to buy the stream and watch the rest of the show. And if you decide to do that, by the way, you have access to the first set. Also, you can watch the whole thing. You got like 48 hours to watch the whole thing. Uh, I guess you can probably watch it as many times as you want to in that period. And of course, you can also subscribe to the entire tour and you can subscribe to nugs.net. That's the reason that we're doing this. They hired us to uh, do something entertaining that's a little bit more interesting than a um, stay tuned card. And I, I'm sure we're meeting that criterion, I have to say, but um, also to uh, market this stream to people. So uh, I, I'm essentially here uh, offering a little bit of a commercial for nugs.net. And if you visit livedead.co, you'll find many, many different ways to access the complete library of Dead & Company performances going back to 2016. There are audio and video downloads and streaming available, and Nugs.net has tons and tons of other music, hundreds of other artists. There's an immense library that you can subscribe to as a, a, you know, on a subscription basis. So livedead.co and Nugs.net are both sites you can visit to find out more about what Nugs.net has to offer you as a music fan. And now back to our conversation. Right. <laughs> Very um, professional you know, kids. Yes. Uh, yeah, one thing I want to, you know, many deadheads uh, of our vintage at least very fondly remember The Golden Road, which is one of the most wonderful fanzines ever. Uh, and one of the most beautifully visual, the design was really, really deluxe. You know, fanzines, fanzines range from like mimeographed you know, things to, uh, to to more elaborate ones. And, and um, I know you guys put so much heart and soul into that, into that, Mag. How, how many issues did you wind up doing of that? 27. From uh, wow. 1984 to, we did two annuals. One in 1992 and one in 1993. After we had our second kid, we decided that three or four issues a year was uh, too much. So, uh, yeah. so we went to the annuals and uh, yeah, it, it really it was, was really amazing. Cool. This stuff, 
one of the things about this culture is that it has inspired so many people, so much scholarship and so much creativity from other people. We had relics, we had Dupree's Diamond News, and we had the Golden Road, and we had radio shows. And I mean, so, and, and Blair, you, you wrote one of the very first biographies of the Grateful Dead. It seems to me when the music never stopped hit in 83, it was only like the third or fourth book on the topic. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I think that really the only one that had been on the topic was the, the Hank Harrison two books, The Dead and The Dead Book before that. I, I don't think there had really been, uh, been a, a regular history of the dead before the music never stopped. So, yeah. And, and was, right around that same time was when the official book of the Deadheads came out, if I recall correctly. So I remember right. looking at, at thinking, if we think this music is so all fired important, we better start writing the books. And so we did. <laughs> and now there are literally hundreds of books about the Grateful Dead. You guys yeah, have contributed yeah, a huge yeah. amount to that. I, I love the ads. You had these great fake ads in the Golden Road. My favorite one, I remember, Chateau St. Bones, a hotel on wheels for your Grateful Dead <laughs> touring need. It was a lot of fun to open up every issue. Yeah, well, I, I had the advantage of I was um, an editor at the San Francisco Chronicle, and so I could go into the photo morgue, as they called it, to look at old, funny black and white pictures from the 50s and 60s and whenever, and then we would kind of make jokes around them for um, for our back issues ads, for our subscribe to the magazine ads, and then for uh, a plotter for some of Blair's humor with when he would just be riffing on things like, like the, the one where Jerry is golfing and he's got a little, you know, with, with Tam Tam shanter on his head. It was pretty funky in retrospect in the sense that, you know, we didn't have Photoshop. We, we would literally cut on a photo and glue Jerry's head onto another photo. Uh, and, it, and it looked like it sometimes, but it, you know, I think people appreciated the spirit in which it was offered. Yeah. <laughs> well, the band, the band always had a really great sense of humor about themselves. And uh, so it, it's not like we were, you know, we were, we were occasionally critical. I was, I was usually accused of being too nice to them, uh, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know they they, they like the humor stuff. They like being mocked uh, in an in a hopefully intelligent way. So, right now you excerpt well, gonna... some of that book in, into a book, right? Was that going down the road? Is that stuff from um, the Golden Road? Yeah, that, that was all Golden Road I stuff. Thought... And there's actually, I've actually been in talks with somebody about possibly uh, re reviving that, uh, reprinting that. So I don't, I don't know if it'll happen or not. Oh, so some, so crazy. I, it'd be great to see a lot of that stuff online, at least, so people can see it. There was so much visual cleverness in it, as well as all of the text. And you did. You also got great interviews. It, didn't you get to interview Hunter and Garcia together for Golden Road? Yeah, that was, uh, I believe, their only interview together back in 1991. All the issues are actually online. Uh, there's there's a site called, I, I hope I don't get this wrong, I think it's called deadsets.com. And... Uh, he has all the Dupree's, Diamond News. He has a lot of relics, oh, and good. he has every issue of the Golden Road. Uh, you can go through them and read them to your heart's content. So, so they do exist oh, online. Great. Also, also the uh, you. UC, uh, UC Santa Cruz archive, uh, Grateful Dead archive has has them too. There, there's had a few few gaps in it. Yeah, but, it's, uh, it wasn't. Com but I thought you let them know. I let them know, but I don't know if they changed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so it, it's out there. If you want to check it out, check and it what out. Are you guys doing, what are you guys doing today? Today? Uh, I mean, <laughs> what, you know, what are your careers? What are your jobs I am, now? I, I don't I'm, mean, writing, like, I'm, writing, I'm writing the cover story of Ukulele Magazine, which is my main gig, and which is on Jake Shimabakuro, based on an interview wow. I did a few weeks ago when Jake was in Livermore. So I'm writing a Jake Shimabakuro show. Show, uh, article. What are you doing, Regan? I'm, I'm editing um, uh, reviews of children's books for <laughs> Common Sense Media, where I work as the, the books editor. And uh, hey, that's our what I want. Website's all about mu mu media and tech for kids. Writing and uh, editing never stops. So mm -hmm. right. Hey, just to uh, just to update people, what we're doing right now is a halftime show at Dead and Company. Dead and Company will be heading back to the stage 
whenever they feel like it and uh, management will inform us exactly when that moment is. But uh, in the meantime, we're doing this thing. Uh, so be patient. The band will be back. And we are filling the time by talking to two of our favorite people, writers, journalists, authors, married couple, parents of two fabulous humans, Blair Jackson and Regan McMahon. And uh, it's, it's a delight to have you guys here. Uh, one thing I want to bring up uh, before we, we go back to the set is, you know, we, we always try to alert people to the good causes supported by the band. Headcount, of course, and the Rex Foundation. And one thing I really wanted to particularly mention this week is the Rex Roadies Fund, which was established to help rock and roll trench workers who, whose livelihoods were devastated by the shutdown of venues and live shows and all that. And I never stop being in awe of these people, and particularly in times like this when they're working under highly fraught conditions because of the pandemic and also because of the kind of weather we've had, you know, just in this first week of the tour, these people don't get a break from the weather. You know, if, if there's a rain delay, they're still on the stage breaking down stuff and putting up stuff and, uh, you know, safeguarding the equipment, making sure it doesn't get rained on. And, you know, they're there from the crack of dawn to set up stages. They head to the next town and set up stages. So if you want to, support the Rex Foundation and all of its good works. You can also specify that you want to support the Rex Roadies Fund. So I wanted to put in a plug for that. That's a really great idea mm -hmm. because, you know, some musicians, I, I sat, sat down and started playing a live show every day from home for tips, but guitar techs don't have that option. Drum <laughs> roadies don't have that option. Sound guys didn't have that option. So there's, those are the ones that are needing our help that's coming through the Rex Roadies Fund. Indeed. I think it's uh, fair to say that the Grateful Dead have the most famous roadies of all time, don't you think, in terms of the number of people who know who the roadies for the Grateful Dead were? So uh, they were uh, that's an true. interesting and cool, cool group, and uh, some of them are still around. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah, roadies, roadies are the unsung heroes. Indeed. Very true. Okay, we are told the band is moving back toward the stage. Uh, the rate of return is always a crapshoot, but uh, we will see how fast they get back there. In the meantime, uh, we've got a couple more minutes we can uh, we can spend with Blair and Regan before we say goodbye to them. How about that Philly show? Okay. That's what I'd yeah. like to talk about. I, that was, that was, I think they've been you know getting better pretty much every night. It's, it's, it's all been great. But that Philly show with the, the, the one continuous set was so interesting and it, it opened up so many interesting possibilities of kind of the flow of the set and they, they kind of nailed it. They really had that energy throughout. It was, it was I thought that was really a spectacular show. Yeah. yeah morning Dew. I, I agree. Good morning Dew. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned earlier that I've been, I've been pulling individual songs and pairs of songs and stuff from these uh, recordings to use on my other radio show. And I've just keep, I've got a huge pile. I mean, it's like, it's all first rate material, you know, there's just so many. And, and the way they connect the songs, the way that the conversational jamming between songs and stuff, it's just really at the highest level. It's so nice to hear. Yeah. And I want to say, uh, sorry, oh, go let, let me let, just want to, just want to single out uh, our friend, Matt Bush for some praise because he had to rejigger that set list to compress it into That's one right. seamless, seamless yeah. show. And, you know, and, and you would think that, you know, sometimes, well, maybe they'll just truncate the jams a little bit, but the show was, the set was yeah. actually designed so that the jams could really flow. And there was some really high quality collective improvisation there. The other one, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, just a whole lot of stuff. So. Yeah. City Field also was uh, was pretty much great from beginning to end. I thought so. New York, New York always gets a good show. So. All yeah, of it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, they just play so well, and they yes, listen. And... And... So, go ahead, Blair. I can say one of the fun things I like about this band is that you sort of never know which song is going to kind of lift you from one night to the next. So you know, like the first night, I remember loving the Brown Eyed Women particularly. I mean, I, I don't know where it came from. It's just amazing they just kept going and going and things that i didn't necessarily look that forward to in the grateful dead you know road jimmy you know i mean i love road jimmy but the way this band does road jimmy is really really great and uh, they love each other you know i mean they you never know sort of what's gonna sneak up on you and just 
suddenly go on and on and jammed out. Uh, John is really uh, stepping it up, I think. So Yeah, and well, B Brown Eyed Women is one of those songs uh, where the beautiful musical bromance of Mayer and Comenti really shines best. You know, they, they have a long sequence of trading off you know, guitar and piano riffs in that song. And any song where that happens can be a highlight of a show for me because those two guys are communicating on a really amazing level. And yeah, we're we have Oteil playing an entirely different form of uh, amazing bass from the other guy that plays this music so famously. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. everybody's at the top of their game in this organization. Absolutely. And it's always great to hear Oteil sing. Yeah. Yes. Now we got to hear yeah. That. yeah, we heard Jeff sing twice on one show. So. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> So we are uh, we are still awaiting word. Um, it's it's always uh, interesting to to see uh, when we're going to get the uh, the word to to shut things down. But uh, Blair and Regan, it has been so great having you. I haven't seen you guys in ages. Uh, David sees you on a much more yeah. regular basis because he lives just up the block. But uh, miss you guys. You know, one of the downsides of being in New York, which has many advantages, is uh, is missing Bay Area buddies. So this is a real treat for me, especially. And I think I think we're getting the word that the last band members are going to the stage. Yep. So we're gonna say our good nights to you, but uh, we have loved having you. Uh, I, Yeah, hope to dance with you in person <laughs> sometime on some coast right. one of these days. Love you All guys. Right. And we will. Thank you. Thank you again, you guys. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Blair Jackson and Regan McMahon, ladies and gentlemen, former publishers of The Golden Road and participants in the Grateful Dead culture on so many ways and contributors to our general creative excellence of this little world. And now, Gary, yes, we get to stretch a little more while we wait for the band to go right, back the word on we stage. Just got... I'm... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just babbling. I'm so excited about this next set. There's this, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that like thinks that every, every uh, historical moment needs to be commemorated as often as possible. And you and I have discussed many times this sort of uh, um, unnecessarily exalted nature of um, Woodstock. But it's nice to think right. that some evocation right. of Woodstock will take place this evening in this place. And some of the material that was played that night is available to this band as well. So let's hope something happens. Yeah, you know, they, these guys do have somewhat of a sense of occasion um, and uh, sometimes none at all. But <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, it's just nice that the, you know, looking out at the crowd, you know, just the vibe is is so positive and if, if anything is evoked of woodstock it's that sense of community you know and that that sense of uh people ex experiencing pleasure of course the adversity then was it got kind of muddy this time it's like a global pandemic so that might be a little more serious but uh we also have more comfortable and technologically advanced surroundings for the band to play in and for the crowd to enjoy things in so uh i'm looking forward to the second set see what the band has up its sleeve who knows and we'll, and we'll talk to you again before the show in a couple of days right um we're doing this we on every be, show uh, intro uh before the first set and then we'll do this uh, between sets thing and an intro to the second set and all of these will be archived as previews for sets one and two over on youtube dot com slash nugs net so if you enjoyed these interviews and want to share them with your friends you can find them over there uh, with links to share them and we're certainly happy to be doing this for you and hope you're enjoying them right and if you check out those free previews and are so enticed please consider purchasing the webcast in hd or 4k because they are the whole tour is going to be available you can go back and watch a set that you missed uh, within uh, a couple of days of it having happened. And uh, so far, every show has been worth checking out. And uh, if, if this band continues this role, I expect more of the same. So um, the band is on stage. We're waiting for the house light signal, but it could happen any second or any minute or any half hour. We never know. <laughs>
We never know. But just to remind you, my name is David Gans, and his name is Gary Lambert, and we get to do this on every show of this tour for Nugs.net, and we sure appreciate the opportunity to do it and to bring so many interesting people to your attention. We also co-host a show on Sunday afternoons on Sirius XM's Grateful Dead channel called Tales from the Golden Road. And the cool thing about that is it's not just the two of us bullshitting. It's a bunch of other people calling in and telling stories and asking questions and quashing rumors and stuff like that. And we've been doing that for 13 years, and we're going to keep doing that all through this as well. So if you have a subscription to Sirius XM, uh, consider tuning in to Tales from the Golden Road on the Grateful Dead Channel 23, Sunday afternoons from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. And I think we are just seconds away from turning it back over to the people on stage. Right. Uh, the whole band is on the stage, we're told. So there's just that magic moment where they decide they're ready. They kill the house lights. The crowd goes nuts. We go nuts at home. We all get up to dance wherever we are. And <laughs> we really look forward to sharing this second set with you. Uh, it's been just such a delight watching this band on such a roll. Anyway, so close, they tell us. That's our most recent text message is so close. So close. <laughs> yes. We're in intimate text contact with people on the stage. So yes. in the know. But being held in suspense while we wait for band members to decide to get to it. Right. You know, I can say that I have actually uh, anchored um, audio, you know, webcasts of shows uh, for Sirius XM from the stage of the Capitol Theater on a platform above the stage of the Capitol Theater. And it's no easier right at the venue either. You never know exactly when the band is going to decide to go on. So I've done this kind of vamping many, many times over many, many years. It, it never gets uh, less interesting or less challenging, but it's uh, that moment the band hits the stage. Uh, I breathe a sigh of relief that I don't have to yammer anymore. And then I uh, have this great exaltation when the band starts playing again. So we're all going to have that together in just a moment. So if you're enjoying this free preview of set two on YouTube, do check out, uh, go over to a live dead.co and figure out what your options are for acquiring more of it. You can subscribe to the season. You can subscribe. You can order individual shows in HD or 4k. You can subscribe to Nugs.net's uh, streaming service, which gives you access to an immense library of literally thousands of performances by hundreds of artists and the entire Dead & Company live concert archive going back to the beginning and many other things. And as Gary said earlier, Sirius XM has a platinum package, which includes uh, access to uh, portions of the Nugs.net library. So you can find out about that at SiriusXM.com. Now we're starting to repeat ourselves. Please take the stage, musicians. <laughs> we love you so much. We would love yes, to hear I, uh, you wrap ourselves. Yeah. Uh, what I've come to learn over the years is the music happens exactly when it's supposed to happen. Um, sometimes that can exceed when we run out of things to say, but that's okay. <laughs> they're, they're paying us to do this, so we'll just keep yammering until we can stop. <laughs> You're just such a freaking bodhisattva about this stuff, man. <laughs> As if we had a choice. Soon come, as they said in Jamaica. That's right. Please. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps we here. should avail our perhaps we should avail ourselves of the of of some of the uh some of the sacrament that allows people to have that soon come uh attitude in Jamaica. That could help. Uh, I, I don't do that when I'm broadcasting. But as soon well, as we get off the air, <laughs> that's right. We both live in legal states now, so. Right. And I'm in California, and our dinner is about to arrive. So we're we're going to have a very pleasant evening watching this second set from uh, Bethel Woods, New York, of Dead and Company. Please play. Please play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I think they're doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well I've, I've already given the uh, go to livedead.co donate to rexfoundation.org and go visit headcount.org and see how you can help 
save democracy by getting people to register to vote. We need, regardless of your position, house lights down, we're done. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> See you in a couple of days.